be doing and often doesn't. WikiLeaks is filling a gap of de democratic and freedom of information. WikiLeaks has exposed abuses of power. WikiLeaks has, more importantly and more dangerously for WikiLeaks, has exposed the US government in its abuse of power. It has exposed that the US government has been spying on United Nations officials and diplomats. Now that is illegal. Not what WikiLeaks has done by telling us that that's what's going on. <laughs> Likewise, WikiLeaks has exposed a catalogue of illegal abductions and torture, war crimes, corruption, subversions of democracy all around the world, not just in the US. I don't think they're selective there. And that's why the US government is now coming after Julian Assange and the Australian government is falling over itself yet again to back the US up. I'm embarrassed that Julia Gillard has claimed over a week ago now that uh, WikiLeaks must have broken some law. And uh, McClelland, our Attorney General, has backed that up as well and that they've talked about withdrawing Julian Assange's Australian passport. Yet here we are almost 10 days later we still have no evidence of what law Julian has broken in terms of the Australian government's claims that WikiLeaks has acted illegally and yet they've had the full powers of the Australian Federal Police on this. Don't expect any of the other government departments to be coming up with anything useful because DFAT, our Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, have actually been banned from accessing WikiLeaks. That's how scared our government is. They won't even let their own public servants have a look at WikiLeaks. Yet, of course, DFAT employees are also on the trail trying to hunt down who the leaks are. Not actually looking at having a good hard look at themselves and realising that the problem here is that politicians have been embarrassed. That is why they're claiming this is in crime. Now, if politicians being embarrassed were a crime, the entire RAND government front bench would be racked, packed and stacked by now. <laughs> Foley wouldn't be out at 3am, he'd be in Mobile prison. Mike RAND wouldn't be in Puglia, he'd be in Pentridge. So if that is actually the crime, I think uh, uh, somebody's telling a few porcupines here and the truth will come out and I imagine WikiLeaks will have something to do with it. One thing I'd like to point out is that WikiLeaks actually revealed the extent of the Sri Lankan state's violence against Tamils during and after the 2009 military offensive. And that was enough to show that it was that official secrecy, showing that the United States government knew about that, um, that is the thing that is endangering lives, not the release of cables under WikiLeaks. And I'd like to point out that our government has actually treated Sri Lankan asylum seekers quite differently to, uh, to other asylum seekers, claiming that they're actually in a safe place. Yet if they had any knowledge of this information that's been released by WikiLeaks, we know that they're also preaching double standards. One final thing I'd like to say is that we got interrupted before by a man who uh, was talking about how the US saved us and the US democracy is a fine thing to have fought, and war, fought wars about. Do you know what? Truth, justice and the American way, open democracy, accountability, I believe in all of those things and I believe to protect them perhaps every once in a while we may have to actually go to war. This is not upholding any of those values. The shutting down of WikiLeaks, the persecution of Julian Assange for an unrelated crime, yet using that to say that WikiLeaks is therefore not valid, it's just a farce, so don't buy the lie. I said on Sunday, and I apologise for those of you who were here then, he's been charged with a law about not using a condom. In the 80s, it used to be a saying about condoms, if it's not on, it's not on. When you hear that WikiLeaks is doing something illegal, just think, nah, that's not on. Thanks.